right folks we just spotted some turkeys out in this field we're we are in central new york and this is my buddy steve scott right here junior and his father steve scott senior and for the sake of this show we're going to call this episode we're going to call steve jr stevie <laughs> do, do your friends normally call you that yeah yeah okay. yeah so uh stevie and i had planned to hunt had planned to hunt several years ago together and, yes, and the did. things didn't work out so we made a point to get together this year and and here i am and we're going to hunt for the next three days together and try and fill a few tags with you and your dad yeah, absolutely and and then after that a bunch, oh, of came bird. Out. bunch of birds just came out oh, right a whole flock of them while we're talking so um we're going to i'll get a little video of these birds and then we'll discuss uh you know what we're going to do for tomorrow morning Good morning everyone from central New York. Sounds like we were slap dab in the middle of about 10 different birds. We got, I don't know, six or seven right across the road. Two or three back behind us quite a ways. One gobbled once up to our left and then a couple more across the road straight ahead of us. Nothing extremely close except for these ones right here to our right. They're about, what, 400 yards away? Steve Jr. called a little bit this morning and they seem to really like it. They got one pretty good to it. And we can see them sitting up in the tree across the road there, strutting and everything, but it won't be too much longer. They'll be pitching down. So. Hopefully they come this way. I just sit here patient. They might work back down this way. So they might be getting a little closer. Mm -hmm. and take a little peek. Go ahead. Oh yeah, they're way out there. They're up on the hillside at that other tree line. Bully jakes. <laughs> they might run them right down here. It's, we're kind of running this way. So we, uh, go ahead. So we had a, I don't know, a pretty good morning, I guess. If, if you like seeing and hearing turkeys and not shooting them. But we... You got enough pre roll there. <laughs> yeah, we got, an, we got a little bit of a story building here because uh, we'll definitely probably be back in here tomorrow morning. Two tops down here, and then two down there. And then there's some jakes mixed in. Grab them. Yeah. on the ground. There's a gobble on the ground, just two, and I'm straight where I'm looking. I'm going straight up, straight up to the woods. Coming. 
and that's why he took. <clears throat> They'll be here soon. Settled in and not far away. You need to get settled because they're coming quick. I know, I'm trying to. See them anywhere? No. I mean, they're right there. Any second, I should see heads coming through. Good fellas. Y'all can let them do their thing if you like. Y'all sort out when to shoot them. You see that one right there? No, that's not Jake. He said kill him if he can. He can. Oh. Uh, 
I'm about to pull the trigger. <laughs> hey, congratulations. Thank you. Nice job. Now we can tell Jimmer. Sorry I missed. <laughs> it's okay. Nice job, Dad. I wanted you to get teamwork. teamwork. There's been teamwork. a lot of misses this year by me, so it's nice to see someone else do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do it a lot, but I do it. And that's a big bird. He's a good one. Holy smokes, he's huge. He's bigger than you. <laughs> so what we got there? Two year old. Two -year -old. Inch spurs. Let me see that other one, see if it's the same. Yep, he's a hold him up, pick him up. I bet that bird's 23, 24 pounds. He's huge. What do you think? Is he that heavy? Yeah. He's all a 20 pounds, I would say. And you plaster his head. Nice. You know, the base of his oh the turkey just got me. So yeah folks, we got, as soon as we get wrapped up here, that ridge there, you see the sun come over. Is it that one? No, it's back over here, yep. right? Sorry, we're gonna be over there in just a few minutes. Well, tell us something. <laughs> I'm pumped. I mean, that was picture perfect. They come out of that woods and rape right to the decoy. You know, I, I was worried about the lighting because they weren't that far, roosted that far away, and I was worried that they would so they were gobbling pretty good. I, I was hoping, and then that one pitched down pretty early. Yeah. I I don't know what it was, if it was a hen and it went up to the gobblers. Right. right. But um, I was like, man, I hope they don't come out too early when we don't have enough light. But they waited, stuck in the woods long enough, just long enough that uh, we got some decent lighting for them. So we're gonna tag this bird. Go get on another one. And we're going to go get on another one while it's still really early. We can only hunt till noon here in New York. And so you got to take advantage of every single minute in the morning. So do your thing with the bird. We'll weigh them when we get to the truck. I got my scale in there. I'd be, I'm anxious to see what these birds weigh. They look pretty big. That's a big bird. Yeah. So folks, we're at our second location. There's a big field up here on top. Steve Singer Senior is going to be shooting this time. He's going to be the primary shooter. And we're just cresting the hill in this field and we're trying to make sure we don't bump any birds. We heard two goblin up here from where we were hunting this morning. We could hear them across the road. There's a little cove in the far corner of this field. These birds seem to be working this ridge. Hopefully we can get slipped in there without bumping any birds and get set up and do some line calling for a while and see if we can get one. Get my face mask on here in a moment. Go keep your ears open. I'm gonna let this car go by. Yeah, sound, I heard it too. By the sound way, sound like it was a piece out there, but yeah, that's a that's a big field out there. <laughs> What'd you say, Steve? Mine rumbled a little bit too. All right, here we go. That's behind you us. That's behind us. Okay. There it was again. I heard it twice. You hear it? Sounds like a hen that's aggravated. She might be coming up the hill behind us.
just in case. I mean, it might not even be a turkey, but the sound is turkey-like. Yeah. yeah, right there. Huh? I hear her walking. Just, just be real still. She's coming up the hill behind us. She's directly behind us, right? All right, just sit real still. Where's she at now? Okay. Okay, we'll just let her walk right on in, I guess. Okay. He shorts again. They are at the turk. They're at the. They're at the decoys. Jakes. Here's Jakes. Jakes. They're all Jakes. Play with them. What'd you say? They're coming right at us, aren't they?
bow on this. <coughs> had to keep eye on this bird. He might just pitch up. I said he may just pitch up and land right in the field. Hands open. Yeah, he's just I hear her yelping. He's going straight to her. We all fear happened this morning. You know, the bird has 360 degrees of direction it can go, and and we're trying to get it to go one direction towards us. And he took, he went 90 degrees of us and went straight to where we last saw those hens just just the evening. But we've got a little strategy. There's a top part of the field. There's a little corner there next to a, a hedgerow that goes across the top of the field. And it seems to be a lot of activity there, a favorite place for the birds to cut across and cut up into the woods on the ridge on the other side of this field behind us. So Stevie and I are going to go set up. I need to put a decoy out. This is going to be a kind of a knowledge of the patterns we, we've seen in the last couple of days. And, Hopefully some hens come by and drag up a big old time right by in front of gun in front of us in gun range. Man, but he was gobbling his head off this morning on the limb. Really, really solid gobble. So let's get our stuff together and uh, we're gonna head up there and just camp out for a while. Go, go right here. Here. So we're trying to make our way to the barn. I mean, up on the top of this field. Some two hens in the lower part of this field, and then a bird just gobbled up where we're parked at the barn. So this. I was scratching in here.
Oh, that's in the field up here. Oh, I see him now. I got him. The two of them, you said? Yeah, I don't see any heads either. Bad thing is my gun's to my left facing backwards. So I just worry about killing the one. And if I have to, I'll just make my gun up for the double if he comes back flogging, you know? Okay. That's if they come in the gun range. That one to our right goblin sounds like he's coming he's in. He's coming in too, yeah, I just can see that. Well, folks, we, that got our hopes up a little bit. It's kind of going to how we planned it. We s snuck up here to set up in this little hedgerow, this little strip of trees, because the birds seem to be crossing right here often. We had two toms come out in the field and they kind of were coming towards us and then they cut up with, to that top hedgerow. There's another field on the other side of it. They are gobbling their heads off, and I'm assuming they're searching for either hens or the one that got shot yesterday. But that's, that second one wasn't the one with them. Yeah, they're, they're across it now. All right, let's make a decision. Do we continue to wait here, and hopefully they come cruising down, or do we do I put a decoy out there at 40 yards, 30 yards? while they're across the hedgerow. I say option D. Put that decoy out there. Let's put a decoy out there. Holy crap. That's close. That was in this field, right? That's right here, right? Those pair, they made a loop. There he is, there he comes right to the decoy. You see him? Okay, I see him, yeah. Come on, whatever. Let him do his thing. Oh, Tag out, buddy. <laughs> he gobbled. He had to be like 60 <laughs> yards away. Yeah, like right on the edge of the... Oh, blood everywhere. Man, I'm telling you, those Federals. That's the third degree, right? That's the third degree. Look at his head.
like those shoes, huh? I love them. Love them. What a beauty. Let's nice see what we, what we got there. I want to see these spurs. I bet you he's a good one. Get cut. He's done. Yeah, he's uh, more than an inch. Yep. Pearl spurs, black tip pearl. Yep. That's a good turkey right there. Yeah. That's a good turkey. Come in and started walloping on the decoy <laughs> and gobbled. How bad's my ear? Yeah, it's a little blood, okay. yeah. Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, I come out of the bushes and the briars had <laughs> turn my head around. Look how white those waddles are. Yeah, it's just looking at that. Well, uh, I guess we can say our plan worked somewhat. <laughs> so, do you want to tell them or? Yeah, we, um, you know, we worked that bird off the roost this morning and he skirted around us. He had a plan and went to his plan and we weren't going to change his mind. So we said, we know where these birds like to hang. So let's just sit up there and wait for them. We put a decoy out and just, you know, never made a sound. Sometimes you just got to be patient and relax. Well, let's back up. First, we came up here with no decoy, no calling, and we had two toms come out in the field. That's right. They, so I, I should tell everyone, yesterday we came to this spot, but we sat back way down there, and a, a gobbler came out. He just gobbled and gobbled and gobbled, but ignored our decoys, ignored our calling. He was searching, and our only guess is he was searching for the gobbler you killed yesterday. Yeah. That was his buddy, yep. and he's been searching for it. Today, what we think was the same gobbler now was a different bird with him traveling goblin they were just searching but they didn't come over here but after they left then we you and i discussed and it's like okay still no calling but maybe just put a decoy, put a decoy out here out. so birds can see it the calling you know you, you always risk a calling to a bird and then he just hangs up way out there just let, let's put a decoy out and let them see it as a visual cue i laid down was taking a nap because these these long days I, and and long nights I don't get a lot of sleep, so I I told uh, Stevie I said you take the first shift I'm gonna take a nap and go 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 right there and woke me up. He <laughs> Stevie didn't have to wake me up. He he woke me up. That gobble did. He must have saw that decoy and gobbled to it. Yeah, I wonder where he if he came out from behind us down below, and crested the hill or something. And he was just on a beeline for that decoy and just beat him. Yeah, that's cool. All right, folks, we're going to get a tag on this bird, get some pictures, and, um, and then we're going to see if I can uh, put me a tag around one of these New York longbeards. And uh, Stevie's going to do, no, I got to self-film. Stevie's got to go to work tomorrow, <laughs> so I got, I got to self-film myself. Self-film myself, yeah. Last morning here in central New York. Hunting the same property that Steve Scott and I have been hunting the last couple of days and uh, he, he's killed two birds off this property. Got a tom across the field and two jakes at least over there and I know there's two hens over there somewhere because I came out here yesterday evening and glassed the fields and I saw him head off that, that direction. This, this property's got quite a bit of turkeys on it. I think there's a tom and a couple of hens roosted somewhere here behind me. I'm not positive. I heard them gobble late in the day, like right before fly up, so I figured they'd be over here somewhere. They haven't made a sound this morning. And we've got at least one or two gobblers across the road. I didn't know exactly where these birds roosted, so I kind of just kind of set up on this hill overlooking this field, hoping I'd be in the mix. So hopefully this bird's somewhere nearby. Hopefully maybe I can get those birds to come across. Who knows? We'll see. It's the last morning, last chance for me to fill a tag.
Jake Gilp seems to be the ticket. That Tom is with two Jakes. He gobbled at my Jake Gilp and twice. And the Jakes Gilp back also. I knew there's some birds up here roosted, and I didn't know precisely where. I thought at least one back here. I never heard one back here. It seemed like all of them were over there, and then sure enough, Jake Yelps this morning, he and Yelps, and then the flock came out, and then we had another time. That was probably the one I thought was roosted here. He must have been roosted way down there, but he gobbled later in the morning, and I just patiently watched these birds come across the field. I kept Jake Yelping to the Jakes, and that kind of, I think the jakes off to one side working this way kind of helped steer those lead hens, which brought all the rest of the birds. And uh, jakes come up and went up here. Uh, that other tom came from my right. These two toms here, when they saw, I guess he was getting close enough, they cut in front of me to go to him. I probably could have shot one then, had they had a little more separation, but 
it was just an unsafe shot. You can only shoot one a day in New York, and I wasn't about to take that chance. But I had the hens to my left, so I was hopeful, and uh, very hopeful, <laughs> that the birds would come back through, and that's exactly what they did. After, after they ran that time off, they stopped right here on the knoll for a little bit, and then they came back through. You know, a lot of people probably would have said, you should have shot the strutter, bigger bird. I'm not that picky. Both of them were adult birds. Um, to get me a time here in New York is a fantastic uh, deal. We've had a fantastic week. Steve, uh, Steve Scott has gotten two birds this week. But anyway, as they passed in front of me, they had enough separation and I took the shot. And so, fantastic week here in New York. Time to head home, Wisconsin. We're gonna, we're gonna start filling some Wisconsin tags the rest of the season, hopefully. But a, a great ending to a great trip here in New York.